This video is brought to you by NordVPN. What, you think celebrating a video game console's five years is impressive? Oh man, now it's time to also celebrate 10 years of one of the finest internet security based services you can find, NordVPN. Do you ever find yourself exploring the internet and wanting to do so securely? No? What are you, dumb? With a quick little download of the application, you are just a few clicks away from security. NordVPN provides some of the finest internet privacy on the market. Whether you want to keep your information secure while you're out and about so no creepy internet trolls get their hands on it, especially if you're using public Wi-Fi, or whether you simply want access to internet or gaming services that are restricted in your country, well, Nord has your needs covered. There's also this new service they provide called Threat Protection, which will protect you against bad websites malware, all sorts of nasty stuff. And nobody likes nasty stuff. Well, well, in your computer files at least, you know what I mean. A ton of different websites will also track you, keeping track of all of your interests and bombarding you with targeted ads as a result. And Nord's threat protection will help with that as well. If this all sounds appealing to you, and it should, you can get yourself a two-year plan with a huge discount as well as one additional month for free by signing up at nordvpn.com slash antude. And hey, you also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what do you have to lose? Thank you once again to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video, and now, on to the main event. Video games! <laughs> Nintendo Switch good. Okay, so many of you longtime viewers out there are well aware that when it comes to the Nintendo Switch in general, I don't really get to talk about it all too often. At least not in a super positive light, but today, I want to change that. I have basically dedicated a good chunk of my life to making sure no good Switch game goes under my radar. I'm checking the eShop regularly, and that's why I'm able to make those stupid eShop garbage videos, and will continue to do so in the future, because it's all in the effort to make sure I know where the good games are, and I gotta tell ya, I have found a bunch of them. I knew I was in too deep when I made sure to add funds to my Japanese eShop account because exclusive to that eShop is a version of Tetris that was on mobile phones way back in the day called Tetris Diamond, and I had to have it. That's when I knew I loved this stupid console way more than I thought I was going to. Since the Switch recently celebrated its 5 year anniversary, and the greatest game on the console, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, is finally here. I am probably playing it as you're watching this video. That is a safe assumption. Uh, I'm only slightly biased, I can also assure you that. I figured now is as good a time as any to talk about some of the great games that helped define my time with the console. These aren't all Switch exclusive. They're not even all digital exclusive. If you're a Switch collector, you have plenty of options there as well. I just think that when it comes to this specific set of games, not enough people talk about them, and that is a damn shame. I want to change that 100%. You could go ahead and call this a Switch uh, Hidden Gem video, but that is a very cliche and overused term, even though that's exactly what this is. Uh, I don't care. I just want to talk about video games I really like, so... Let's go do that. Grapple Dog is the most recent game on this list, so it's really just been on my mind a lot, and man, this game was so much fun. Oh wow, a pixelated indie platformer, what a surprise. Alright, now listen, hear me out. In this game, you play as a dog named Pablo, and you have a grappling hook. And while I know many of you now are ready to buy the game just based on those facts alone, you will be happy to know that it is incredibly satisfying to control too. Grapple Dog really evokes a sort of GBA style with its art direction, something I don't think we see enough of honestly, and the soundtrack is really punchy and catchy too, especially the first world's level theme. Really good stuff, but man, it is all about that play control, and this game nails it. There is one central gimmick that is stretched across the entire adventure. You take your grappling hook, attach it to as many platforms as you possibly can, and swing about enjoying your day without a care in the world. And there are enough little tweaks and changes on a level by level basis to have you continuously growing your skills and getting better and better, making it a consistent reward from start to finish. 
Now, obviously, in the indie world, there are platformers left, right, and center, and many of them are good, don't get me wrong, but only few manage to come up with an idea and absolutely nail it with utmost confidence. This is one of those games. Momentum-based physics is always a great time when executed well, and the fact that you're a dog, an adorable dog, named Pablo, that you can pet when you're done with the levels because that entire time you were in that level, you were destroying a ton of robots? Yeah, man. Grapple Dog is an absolute win. So, rhythm platformers are not necessarily a completely barren genre, but for the most part, it consists of auto runners like Bit Trip and Harmon Knight, but Mad Rat Dead set out to turn that genre staple on its head with an absolute in-your-face style, and damn it did it ever succeed. You see, rather than it being an auto runner, you have full control of Mad Rat at all times, moving, jumping, dashing, attacking, all to the beat of the music. It sounds daunting, but trust me, you will start off nice and slow, but you'll be pulling off the most ridiculous strings of combos and moves by the time your adventure comes to a close. It is so satisfying. But let's say you're not rhythmically inclined, that's okay. The beat doesn't stop, but you can always sit back, gauge your surroundings, and tackle things at your own pace. You keep dying? Don't worry, man, you just go back a couple of beats and you jump right back in. There's even a hard mode for all of the songs too, that puts action triggers in a lot more moments of the song, and it is really, really tough. So no matter how good your rhythm skills are, it doesn't matter what side of the rhythm spectrum you're on, you are covered here. In the story, you play as... Uh, well, a, a dead rat that passed on after a science experiment. But thanks to the rat god and your now omnipotent heart, you go on a quest to relive your last 24 hours so you can die with no regrets. It's a story that takes Mad Rat across many different locations, puts you in front of a ton of creepy obstacles, and there's even some character development sprinkled in too. It's really nice stuff. I didn't expect as much character depth as I got with this story, and it's, uh, it's really surprising. It's really, really cool. And naturally, of course, you have an absolute bump in soundtrack to accompany you too. The composers did not need to go as hard as they did, but I swear, as soon as the title screen pops up, you are treated to one of the catchiest soundtracks ever created, all the way until the final credits roll. Mad Rat Heart, Mad Rat Alive, Rat's Dream, all great songs. God, this entire soundtrack is so, so good. The art style is wild too. You have this blend of gross, grimy, sometimes genuinely disturbing, but also with so many bright and vibrant colors all over the place. Ah, it's so, so cool. I can't get over that. It's just a really cool game. Rhythm fans, platformer fans, uh, uh, rat fans, don't pass on this one. Murder by Numbers is essentially what you get when you combine the crime-solving visual novel drama of Ace Attorney and... Picross. I've played the game and I still don't think it's real. This is really one of those things that, as a huge fan of both of those initial franchises, this game hit my heart in a way that basically no other game had done before. In Murder by Numbers, you play as ex-actor Honor with her new robotic assistant, Scout. I will die for Scout, by the way. And as this brand new duo, you live through a bunch of murder mysteries. You talk to a bunch of suspects, you find clues, basically everything that you do in Ace Attorney. However, investigations, gathering evidence, all that stuff is completed with a Picross puzzle now instead of just receiving the item. That's it. That's basically the one main change. And I love it so much. It doesn't necessarily do either part of the equation better than the franchises that it's inspired from, but the stories are still filled with engaging characters, a few solid twists and turns as you near the end, all that good stuff, and the Picross puzzles are about as interesting as they can be, if not more so considering the designs you're going for are actually based off of the items that are relevant to the plot, and that little bit of context, it makes things a little bit more fun. The game also brings in Masakasu Sugimori as the composer, who was responsible for the soundtracks of the first Phoenix Wright game, as well as Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, both of which are some of the best soundtracks of all time, so this is really just me being 100% biased here. I adore this game, everything about it. It's not perfect, but oh my god, it's so, so good. Give me Cooking Mama Picross next.
Radical Rabbit Stew is a puzzle game where you play as a chef in space and you hit rabbits with a massive spoon and push them around a bunch so they land in these hot pots filled with stew that then jettison themselves into the sky. Hope you caught all that. Now, I know it might sound kind of twisted when saying the premise out loud, but counterpoint, uh, uh, the sprite work is really cute, uh, so it's okay, I guess. I feel like this game is the product of trying to take a more action-y approach to something like Choo Choo Rocket. This is a tried and true puzzle game formula where the goal is clear, the objective is clear, it's just a matter of you doing all of the angles and planning in your head so you can make sure you get it done successfully. And yes, this is a concept that you can probably apply to like millions of games out there. Need I remind you, Nintendo Switch has games, but Radical Rabbit Stew stands out from the pack because of its incredible polish. All of that cute sprite work squashes and stretches and bounces all over the place. It's very visually satisfying. Slapping the rabbits around as the one main gimmick is incredibly fun. Uh, please don't take that part out of context, I beg of you. And then you finish a level and your little guy is like, yeah. And I don't know about this one, maybe it's just me, but the jumping into a level sound effect sounds like it was ripped out of the Super Mario World cartoon. That to me gives this game extra points. And uh, plus the first boss is a puppy in a bunny costume. I think I've made my point. Ah, oh, hey, look at that, another platformer. Oh wow, I guess Ant really likes platformers, huh? <laughs> Don't even write the comment, I got you covered. Pumpkin Jack is what happens when you take the 90s cult classic Medieval, modernize the hell out of it, and make it the perfect Halloween game for those who miss the era of 3D platformers with a strong focus on combat. You are a pumpkin head on a big old body, you got a crow as your companion, you got a whole slew of weapon types to take down all sorts of evil spirits and ghouls, you got collectibles aplenty, the levels, while linear, are filled with a bunch of memorable set pieces, the aesthetics are perfect, Man, all right, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was not really that much of a fan of Medieval. You know, I loved the looks of it, and Sir Dan as a character is really cool, but mechanically, it just never clicked with me. Pumpkin Jack handles things so much better in my opinion. The combat is super simplistic, but it's really satisfying just knocking out everything in your way. Ah, oh, and dude, you got these little bits where you take your head off and like go down a hole, and you do a bit of puzzle platforming before going back into your body, and <laughs> ah, oh, God, it's so, it's so cool. The adventure as a whole is a bit on the short side, which is my only real complaint here, so if there's a sequel by the time you're watching this, great. If not, that's okay. Look, Jack Dance. This is now your Halloween tradition. Thank you, you're welcome. Little known piece of Ant Dude trivia here. Years ago, I did a video on non-Kirby games by HAL Laboratories, the Kirby developers. And one of my favorites in that video was this mobile game, Part-Time UFO. I had figured at the time that the game would remain on mobile forever. So, when it randomly showed up in a Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase and Shadow dropped on the Switch eShop that same day? Oh, I jumped on it immediately. I needed more job ski in my life. Imagine this scenario. You are a UFO equipped with a large claw named Jobski. God, Jobski, that's such a, such a name. And you decide to take up as many part-time jobs as possible, all of which require lifting things. Well, you don't have to imagine it. Th that's what part-time UFO is. Helping a fisher gather a ton of fish, build up this stone structure in a specific way, stack cheerleaders in as tall of a formation as possible. All the typical part-time job affairs here, you know? It's just such a charming ride, too. You get a bunch of unlockable costumes that change up your basic movement options. There are a ton of achievements on a stage-by-stage -stage basis, as well as the game in its entirety. And with the Switch version, there's even co-op now. And dare I say, this is one of the most entertaining cooperative experiences you can find on the Switch. Now, this could just be a bias once again, but I was sold on this game immediately because one of HAL's games is no longer tied down to just phones. Something I wish Nintendo did a bit more of, but with a Kirby bias comes a Jobski bias. I'm a fan. Now, if we can get all of the other HAL Labs developed games like New Ghostbusters 2 up on the NES Switch Online service, then you'll really never hear the end of it from me. Hey, look at that! Another platformer! Antu truly only likes one thing. 
Tori 3D is what one would possibly call an anomaly in the grand spectrum of the Switch's eShop. What we have here is a game that only costs 99 cents, and the kicker is not only is it not garbage, it's actually really fun. First and foremost, you play as a little bird with sunglasses, shoes, and a backpack, and that alone makes it worth the cheap price of admission. But beyond that, we have a small set of a few levels that challenge you with going through them as fast as you can, while also collecting all of the, uh, melancholy star items that you can. And that's... it. Actually, that's it. That's the whole game. It takes less than an hour to complete. You got no crazy movement mechanics to unlock. There's a couple of extra characters to play through the game with if you are so inclined, but it's fun. And that's all that counts. It goes some weird places too, man. I don't really want to show anything spoilery here, but there's a sinister side to all of this that kind of blew me away given, once again, this game was 99 cents. All of this applies to the sequel, Tori 2, as well. More of the same, absolutely, but you run through these levels so quick, they don't even have a chance to overstay their welcome. Listen, alright, in my time, I have played a lot of really, really bad Switch eShop games. So just on the basis of this being a $1 platformer that I think deserves a spot in your digital library, quite frankly, that's a miracle. Just a word of advice, uh, don't trust this thing. Thank me later. Dude, okay, in my opinion, I easily saved the best for last here. I don't really play RPGs too often nowadays, but as soon as I put 10 minutes into this one, I could tell that CrossCode was something special. In terms of its world design and general premise, this is something that I haven't really seen before. You play as Leia, a character dealing with amnesia within Crossworlds, an MMORPG that is fully populated by other players. Everything here is in the world of an MMO, and the story acknowledges it at every turn. You and your teammates in your clan go on raids. People have to disconnect at certain times because they have to wake up for school the next day. You have a rival that makes fun of you for how low your level is. There are plenty of typical RPG tropes here, of course, you got shops, equipment, skill trees, stuff like that, but the consistent world building of Cross Worlds, the game within the game, and Leia, a character who is constantly developing thanks to her real world assistant keeping her in the loop, and even making sure her limited vocabulary improves so she can communicate with her new friends, and the eventual reasoning for just why Leia has amnesia in the first place, it is just incredible from start to finish. And even going beyond that in the post-game story DLC, that was really awesome as well. I always said to myself that gameplay-wise, a game like Xenoblade is what you would get if you had a single-player MMO. The combat just sort of felt that way, you know, but this is the truest form of a single-player MMO that I have ever seen. Oh, and yeah, the combat is so intense too, since you have access to both long-range and short-range abilities at any given time. Plus, you're dealing with environmental awareness for each character, since you can even chain encounters to up your rewards, even when you go on to the next screen. And there's a risk-reward system of using special elements for your attacks, just enough so you don't go into overdrive. Oh, it's so- oh god, it's, it's so good. The music is amazing, the entire cast of characters is so well thought out given the context of them being real-life people playing as characters in an MMO. The story was blowing me away by the end of it. I understand that I'm not much of an RPG guy around these parts, I don't really talk about them, like, at all, but easily. This has jumped up to being one of my favorite games in this genre ever. For those of you who are worried about diving into games that are far too long, I will say that the story took me a little over 30 hours to complete, so if super long RPGs aren't your thing, keep that in mind, you're totally fine. When it comes to the Switch version, there are unfortunately a few frame rate issues from time to time, which is extra unfortunate considering I don't think a game of this style realistically has any excuse, but at the end of the day, I cannot give CrossCode anything but the highest recommendation. I know I only scratched the surface here, this is an RPG, there's a lot I could go into, but trust me, this is one of the good ones. Add these games to your Switch's wishlist, or better yet, go on DekuDeals.com and manage your wishlist on there instead. It is much easier to do so on that website than it is on Nintendo's own eShop. Shouldn't really surprise anybody at this point, and add some extra variety to your Switch's overall gameplay experience. Congratulations to five years on the market, here's to five more, and now with that all being said, uh, I'm gonna go back to Kirby now, so... Bye.